March 17th, 2019. It was a Saturday night. I was sitting on the couch beside the woman I proposed to a year prior. The light beaming from the 50-inch television filled the corners of the dark living room. Before this moment, my fiance and I had a spectacular day full of smiles, great conversation, good energy we shared, despite the complications we dealt with for the past months. No relationship is perfect. I don't give a damn how pure we appear to the outside world. Social media is just a highlight rail being judged by public visuals inside the house. Shit was out of place. What's the password to your Instagram? She asked, glaring at me with squinted eyes with suspicion written all over her amber face. For what? You messed up last time you had access to my Instagram. A few months prior, she had access to all social media platforms that I utilized daily. The privilege was taken away when she responded to compliments by women followers in my direct messages. Most of the time when I get a friendly compliment from a woman, I will double tap the comment to show my appreciation. I'm an author with real believers, readers, and fans, so for me to ignore them, that would be rude, especially if a reader is supporting me by buying my books and merchandise. On the other hand, everyone that followed me on Instagram knew I had a woman that I was deeply in love with. So if anyone left disrespectful comments, I would just leave that person on red. The day she took it in her own hands to argue with somebody through the direct messages was the day I changed my password. After that day, our relationship took a jump off the highest bridge in the world. I only made one mistake. You made a lot and you still holding that over my head? Well, I'm not giving you my password, I said shortly. Let me see your phone then. There was nothing in my phone. I deleted all messages that shouldn't be in my thread before the trip home from Morgantown, West Virginia. I usually drove there and back every Saturday morning for work. No, you can't see my phone. The Seinfeld show was on television. We both turned our attention to the show while we traded awkward energy. I can't believe I was going to marry a nigga who won't give me the password to his Instagram. She said, gleaming at me with disgust. Damn, we had a good day. Now you're going to end it like this, I said, shaking my head. I pulled my iPhone out my pocket, then began to scroll through Instagram. I felt her eyes drilling a hole through my soul while I continued to be unbothered. Not even a minute with my phone out, she swiftly adapted my phone, then darted through the dining room into the kitchen to grab the biggest cutting knife. I did not chase her down. I just walked behind her nonchalantly for the fact I knew there was nothing in my phone to get caught. Don't you come near me. I will fucking stab you. She heaved heavily, nose flaring wider than a bull with a knife and shaking hands. You can have the phone. You ain't going to find nothing. I was certain. She backed out the kitchen, then went up the steps to the second floor. I scrolled to the living room with no worries, then flopped on the couch to continue watching Seinfeld. Forty minutes later, I heard the squeaking bathroom door open. I heard the love of my life moan with pain. Oh my God, I miss you, she said once. I miss you, she said again. I heard footsteps moving slow down the wooden steps. I knew she came across something, but I'm not sure what she would have detected. My hands were moist and my heart was beating off rhythm. And what I'd done earlier before coming home from West Virginia probably be the karma that end us for good. At a turtle pace, she crept down the wooden cracking stairwell with the 45 Magnum gun in hand streaming down her distressful face while her hair went every in which way. How could you, Darren? How could you done this? All the stuff I done for you? What I do? I wasn't startled not one bit because the safety was on. I was more scared of her with the knife in hand than the gun. She misses you already. What are you talking about? I had an idea who the woman was, but I still played dumb. Darren, don't fucking act stupid. Another step. Put the gun down. She fucking misses you. Now I was getting nervous. She was furious. 
she lift the gun up, breathing heavily with the finger on the trigger, then pow, pow. 12 hours earlier, it was a sunny Saturday afternoon after delivering medicine to Morgantown, West Virginia for work. I detoured my way to Cal U College to visit Cassidy. How I met Cassidy was on Instagram via messaging. She heard out a video in my story. I respond with a simple, you're going to have an amazing day, which turned into a full-blown conversation. She mentioned her week was a complete disaster and my manifestation for her was the best words she heard all week. My life was on a downswing at home as well. First, my relationship was falling apart. My fiance wrote a long letter stating that it's best for us to separate after four years. On top of that, she withdrew sex for approximately two months prior. Her reason for taking away intercourse because she wanted to wait until we got married. Granted, this was after we had our child, but I was okay with her decision. I was off for waiting until the day we tied the knot. It just happened abruptly. She abandoned sex cold turkey followed after a five minute conversation. As the days passed, I became addicted to porn and on social media more than usual. I was on the far side of being sexually frustrated. Honestly, I thought we both were frustrated. We argued regarding the smallest shit. It was like we was growing apart by the hour. There were days that we didn't even speak. We just walked past one another as if we were blind. So when I was at Cassidy house, the connection was evident. We both were tender, facing some life predicaments. She was young, petite, red bone, appealing to the ass with long, black, curly, natural hair that stops in the middle of her back. Cassidy was exceedingly affectionate. Our hugs lasted for more than a good minute, which ended with a forehead kiss. She was full of energy despite whatever's happening in her life. She hid it behind her smile and outgoing personality. Where at home was so dark, cloudy, and doleful. At this moment with Cassidy, the vibe was like a sunny day in spring. Cassidy shared an apartment with a roommate who left for spring break. The unit was separated into two places. Each section of the apartment had an office, a bedroom, and a bathroom with a huge mirror behind the sink. Between the private rooms, there was a kitchen and a furnished living room. They were actually living comfortably for two college students. Her office was filled with photos on the wall of friends and family, stuffed animals in the corner of the room, and a bookshelf full of books and a few decorations. Her bedroom was plain. There was a twin-size bed and a 30-inch television playing MTV show, Ridiculousness. We laughed at the show momentarily as we watched TV, but for the most part, we shared conversation. When she removed her school pride sweatpants, then laid in the bed, dressed in panties, colorful high socks, and a spaghetti strap crop top, I positioned myself behind her thin body, and I held her as if she was my woman. At this time, the woman at home did not exist. I brought Cassidy comfort, and most importantly, I listened. By bringing those needed qualities, the bond was deeper on her end. On my end, I fed her knees to make her fall for me so deep, she was open for me to plant soft kisses on her neck, her collar, and the nape of her neck. Her body shift from each kiss as her moans poured while she breathed heavenly. I was beyond aroused. It had been almost two months since I felt the warmth of a woman. When she pushed her ass against my shaft, it grew hard to its full potential, throbbing, down there begging for the pussy. I want you, I whispered in her ear. She snuggled her booty against me. That was all the reply I needed. I usually would caress a woman's entire body to get her aroused to the breaking point. I would edge her to get the pussy extremely wet. A woman has a complete body to play with. You have more than just a pussy and two nipples. If a man play around those areas, like licking on her inner thighs, kissing on the pelvis, deep passionate massages, kissing and licking from her neck to her toes, or briefly licking or sucking on her hot spot, you would spike her in sexual excitement. When it comes time to swiddle the lips around the clits, so you can slide your tongue across or plug your pipe inside her vagina, she will be set to climax as soon as you stimulate her. This was a different scenario. I was past horny and 
my selfish need for sex had me disregard the foreplay and forget I was hanging by a thread in my relationship. I adjusted myself between her frail legs, slid the panties to the side, leaned my face amidst her thighs, then bundled my lips across the clitoris with a full mouth of saliva. I slithered my tongue slowly against her love button. Her body twitched as if I switched on the power generator. No more than one lap across the clits, I noticed her spot, but to respond her body signal. Cassie's stomach sank in and out in motion. She had no control of her hands. They was gripping sheets, pillows, scratching walls, and unsystematically waving all over the bed while her moans filled the room. My tongue was sliding back and forth across the clits in a mild pace, attacking for her to climax all over my lips. Not even five minutes of devouring her passion fruit, her body went red. And like an air mattress, her skin deflated into her bones as she quivered between curse words and grabs of moan. Minutes after regaining her composure, she kindly returned the favor. She placed herself between my thighs as I laughed flat on a twin bed with just a t-shirt and socks on. And she grabs hold of my twin three centimeters curve midnight manhood. I felt her lengthy curly hair brush against my stomach before her mouth took me fully in. In combination, her pretty face yo-yoed as her hands stroked and drool cascade down the roots. It had been a while since someone touched me in such a way, therefore my dick was utterly sensitive. Suck that shit, I uttered, probably biting my bottom lip as I gained possession of her hair and bought it in a fist as her face continued to suck my issues away. Erotic noises of slurping in unison with soft moans had me on the verge of sprouting white juices. I had no plans on coming from a blowjob. I was yawning for the pussy. In the midst of getting slobbed out, I interrupted her by pulling her hair back. She glared at me with a slight smile. Sit on it, I demand, glimpsing down at her messy face. Cassie hovered over my soaking black manhood, coated with her mucus. She was more breathtaking with each inch she absorbed. Her love box was ultra tight gripping, warm and supremely wet. My toes curled in the moment she seesawed upward and downward and alternated on my pole. To be honest, a lengthy sex session of more than five to 10 minutes to an hour was out of question. First, my goal was to make her come. And if I came before her, I would eat her until she did so. One fact I teach when I counsel couples is not to be selfish. Sex is an unselfish deed. When both is core to satisfy one another, that's when the intercourse is glorious. So even if she doesn't climax off the dick, I had to come up with another way to make her overflow. At the end of the day, she melted on my shaft as she rode. Not even a second after I came, I felt a scramble of remorse. In this situation, I was not thinking with my head, but just my dickhead. When the lustful feeling of the chase of pussy diminished, reality struck. Especially when the shit hit the fan later that night. 20 minutes of playing the field could get you kicked out the game permanently. Due to the fact I had guilty consciousness, I treat my ex to dinner just to sow the guilt I was concealing. Dinner or an incredible time did not stop the universe to allow my inconsiderate infidelity act to remain in the dark 12 hours before. Pow! She never shot the gun, but she shot me by leaving our four year relationship. This when life took a dramatic change. I never thought in a million years I would be at stage one again in a single category.